Hi there, I'm Dr. Knut Mo, hair loss expert at Sons, and I'm here to answer your questions from the internet. So the first question, will hair loss ever be cured? I mean, it's a really tough question to know the answer to that. Hair loss has been around for millennia um, and, and the two most effective treatment, minoxidil and finasteride, were actually discovered by accident. Minoxidil is a blood pressure tablet and when people started taking it, they discovered that they grew hair. Similarly, finasteride is a drug that was used uh, by men with enlarged prostates uh, in their older years and they discovered that their hair, they started growing hair when they were taking it. So these are two treatments, the most effective treatments discovered completely by accident. There's possibilities that any drugs that are coming out in time could have uh, some of these effects, but there's also a team of scientists working, trying to find the answer. You know, it's a holy grail, the cure for, for male pattern hair loss. So hopeful there'll be new treatments in time, but it's early days to say whether there'll ever be a, a definitive cure. So the next question, how does hair loss happen? The hair loss in males is what we're talking about here, is caused by a genetic susceptibility to something called DHT, that's dihydrotestosterone. Now DHT is something that we all have, but in males who are predisposed to male pattern hair loss, it's like a, a switch is being flicked and that DHT causes an effect in your hair. And you can inherit that from either side of the family. They used to say it was from your mum's side or your, or your mum's uncle that would have caused hair loss, but you can get that from either side of the family. So if you look at your parents uh, or your grandparents and see if there's uh, some fairly definitive hair loss there, there's a good chance that that might be the way that you, you may head in time. So DHT starts to exert an effect on your, on your hair and it can happen at any age. It can happen in your teens um, or more hopefully it'll happen in your 50s or 60s when it's, it's less of a concern perhaps. And what it does is it causes miniaturization in hair follicles where each hair that regrows um, in a cycle, which is what hair does, um, will come back a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner than the previous one until they've effectively died out. So the key if you're looking to treat male pattern hair loss is to try and hold on to what you have rather than regaining what you've lost. So once a hair follicle is dead, it's, it's died off entirely. So there are treatments for that to stop it in its track, but it's a, it's a case of trying to get on that treatment earlier rather than later if you want to hold on to what you have. So the third question, can hair loss be prevented? Well, if you're genetically predisposed towards getting hair loss, there's a high likelihood that you're going to develop it at some point or other in your life. You may see from a family history, if you've got siblings or a parent who went lost their hair at a very early age, that that might be a marker for you, whereas others maybe start to thin later in life. The key is to recognize it if it is going to happen, and if you do want to do anything about it, is to try and get on treatment earlier. There are other treatments that can, as it was, or things that can predispose you towards hair loss, things like stress, things like a, um, an unhealthy diet or lifestyle. And, and, and while those won't stop hair loss in, uh, from happening in its entirety, I think looking after your body means that you look after your hair in, in the grander sense. So making sure that you eat well, exercise regularly, get enough sleep, all of those things will reduce the likelihood of you developing hair loss. They may not stop it, but um, they, they can certainly help in terms of your overall health and well-being, which will contribute to your hair health as well. So next question. Can hair loss be reversed? This is a complex question. There are treatments that are effective at treating hair loss. Uh, the first principle of treating hair loss is to stop for further hair loss. Of, of those people who go on to take treatment, a, a good number of them uh, will reverse their hair loss to a degree. But I think expectations are important to manage here. If you've got somebody who has an entirely bald scalp, really medications aren't going to reverse hair loss. Those hair follicles that, are, that have died off are, are irretrievable. The solution in those sorts of scenarios is to head down the transplant route or look into that if, if it's something that you're keen to get more hair growth. So that involves really just moving roses from the back garden to the front garden. So you're just redistributing hair that's around the sides and the back this is hair that's not subject to male pattern hair loss and putting it in a way where you get more bang for your buck and you can actually see something that frames your face, makes you look the age that you are um, and, and hopefully give you the result you're looking for. I think the key to, to reversing hair loss is, is really to try and get onto treatment early if, if that's something that you want to do. And remember, you know, doing nothing is an entirely appropriate treatment for, for hair loss. You know, getting the razor out and embracing the hair loss and having a nice shaved head is absolutely fine as well. So, so really, it's just only if you're looking to, to treat the hair loss, support the hair that you have, and um, maybe regain a bit of density, going on proven medical treatments is the way to go. There are an awful lot of snake oils out there which purport to treat hair loss. Um, so, so looking for treatments that are scientifically backed, 
proven and licensed treatments for hair loss is, is the way to go if you want to have the best results of, of improving your, your overall hair. So next question, are hair loss pills safe? And that's a complicated question because there's an awful lot of hair loss pills out there and there's an awful lot of treatments purported to work for hair loss. And at the end of the day, what, what we really want to do is figure out what ones are effective and are they what your expectations are with them. So I suppose any hair loss treatment that you want to take, if it's a medication, you want to make sure it's got a licensed ingredient and a proven ingredient in it. So if we're talking about hair loss treatments, finasteride and minoxidil are the two most effective and proven treatments for hair loss. They've been around since the 1990s and they have very well publicized and well known side effect profiles and efficacy profiles. No tablet will have 100% safety records in, in the sense that every single medication will have some element of a side effect and that includes things as simple or straightforward as paracetamol. So, so drugs that are licensed and have gone through the process uh, of um, of approval for medications will be evaluated for the level of safety and efficacy that they have. And so these two drugs are ones that have gone through those processes. So while nothing is 100% safe, they are the most effective and safest treatments that are out there for hair loss. Then there's the other school of thought when it comes to medications, supplements or vitamins. So there's lots of tablets out there and vitamins out there that treat hair loss. And they would usually be classified as food supplements or as vitamins. And those in their, in their nature would tend to be quite safe. There's always a possibility of allergies to any of the ingredients in them, which would be rare enough. But, but by and large, they'd be considered safe. But they'd be in a different efficacy profile. They'd be more for supporting hair growth, hair strength and hair thickness, rather than purporting to actually treat male pattern hair loss. What's the difference between male and female pattern hair loss? So there are actually two distinct processes with two distinct causes. So hair loss affects males and females in, in quite a different way. They both tend to be hormonally mediated. Um, so in males, it's caused by dihydrotestosterone and the effect that that has on people who are susceptible to it. And it happens in a particular um, pattern, which is why it's called male pattern hair loss. And that's classified using something called the Norwood classification, where they start off uh, typically that your hair loss may start at the temples. Occasionally it can, and some people start at the crown. And, and what happens is the temples start to recede and we end up with, with some car parks up here. You get a bit of a you know a solar panel developing on the top, and and these things would tend to to creep back. Some people would have a a, a frontal forelock there that sticks out a little bit and maintains some hair density. And I suppose where it really starts to show an effect is where in the mid scalp the density gets lost. And what you really start to notice is if you can start to see the outline of the shape of your skull through your hair, then you're losing your facial framing, and actually then it would become quite quickly become a lot more apparent. So a lot of people don't realize that they've got hair loss until they've actually lost about half of their hair. Um, we start off with about 20,000 hairs on our head and, and typically you're down to 10 or 12,000 before you realize you've got hair loss. Female pattern hair loss is a slightly different process. It doesn't tend to develop in the temples um, or, or in the crown. It tends to develop diffusely across the top of the scalp um, in, in a much more kind of gradual process. Things that can accelerate that would be menopause or, or actually after having uh, after pregnancies, a lot of women can find that their hair loss would start to fall out um, generally due to hormonal changes that go on in pregnancy and, and afterwards. I suppose the, the difficulty or the difference between the two of them is that is the treatment protocols would be quite different uh, in terms of effective treatments. So with males, there's a very clear um, process of, of licensed medications such as minoxidil and finasteride that are proven to treat hair loss. In females, they do use minoxidil and finasteride would tend to be reserved for, for postmenopausal women and it's very much an off-license off and, and a more specialist treatment. So um, the treatment for female pattern hair loss is actually a little bit more complex. Um, but they are different processes. They affect men and women in different ways and at different stages in their lives. So, so it's an interesting question.